Herzlich willkommen. Wir machen das heute Abend einmal nicht auf Deutsch, sondern auf Englisch, weil unsere Gäste des Englischen mächtiger sind als des Deutschen. Und uh, that's why from this point on we'll continue in English. Welcome everybody. I'm very happy that we're meeting. Uh, so slowly more and more people are coming in. It's not many yet, but uh, we're hoping for much more. Um, this is a very special meeting we have tonight. From the beginning of uh, the 24th of February, uh, Kami and I had decided that we want to do something. We didn't know what exactly. And of course, the German Composers Union, if I translate it correctly like that, does not have any money to, to, to spend and uh, just give out to our colleagues from Ukraine. Um, so we thought of how could we help? We could um, give a little bit of PR. We could welcome uh, composers from the Ukraine and maybe help that they get uh, connections. And uh, so we started trying to find someone. I even wrote to the ex ambassador, Mr. Melnick in Berlin, uh, who was no great help, I must admit, he didn't even answer. But finally, we came across Natalia because Natalia is a well known composer from Ukraine. She won prizes, had a lot of performances. And she suggested um, when we contacted her that she would bring Roman Kreslenko along. So welcome to both of you. Uh, Natalia is a composer guest tonight and Roman, our conductor guest. At the same time, um, actions kind of passed us up. And this is the first time ever we are dedicating a meeting, not a written score, but a meeting to someone. And uh, I suggested that we dedicate this talk tonight to Yuri Karpatenko. Do I pronounce it correctly, Natalia? Yeah, Yuri Karpatenko. Uh, Yuri Karpatenko is a colleague of us. He was a colleague of us. He was a conductor and he refused to conduct a festivity to celebrate the Russian uh, aggression against Ukraine. What did they do? They murdered him because of that. Oh. And um, so I think when I was 18 years old, I was a big fan of John F. Kennedy, who had written a book which was called, I read it in German at the time, I think it was called Civil Courage, probably in original, the same thing, Civil Courage. And Yuri Kapatenko had a lot of exactly that. Of course, we cannot make him come back again, but we can remember him and we can do something in that we keep him in our uh, minds and try to spread the thought of this civil courage, which is extremely important, not only for the Ukrainian freedom, but for us all. That said, um, I would suggest Natalia that we go into it. Would you like to um, tell us first, um, you're not a direct refugee, that means you you were not in, in Kiev or uh, Kherson or any place like this in the past weeks or months, but you live in Norway. 
and still you are connected with this war in very specific ways. Yes, I'm not uh, a direct refugee. You, you have specified it very correctly. Uh, because uh, perhaps subconsciously I am a refugee, psychologically speaking, and we, uh, it, it's not only about me, but all the other Ukrainian people. It's about mm, losing the safety of your home, of uh, your childhood house, uh, where you grew up, where you perhaps composed your first melodies and that place is no longer safe not only for you to come back but also for the people that you love for the people that you care and for the people you identify your identity with which is very painful and unfortunately um uh, yeah we cannot change the situation that it is now but what we can do is to help as much as we can Right, I agree. So uh, you are enrolled in several activities. Uh, one is an NGO that uh, is taking care of refugees, right? Yes. And then um, you, you, you founded yourself um, a platform in the internet to help. Yeah, what? it was like a group on Facebook because we had uh, we used to have two platforms that were very active in Ukraine. Previously, the first one was uh, vk.com. It was like known as Kontakte, but it was Russian-based platform. And then everything after the Euromaidan and even a little bit before this revolution, they all switched to Facebook platform, a more international one. Uh, and so people especially younger generations they are much easier to reach through uh, through a, pla a platform like that and uh, i didn't know many musicians i know i knew my teacher in ukraine but she was a bit older generation uh so she just advised me to create uh not, not to advise me but we talked with her how we could help and she said natalia there is like a language barrier that we have to come through. So uh, there were many people who were reaching out to me through that platform in the beginning when the system was not yet working, the system to help. Uh, everyone was in chaos. Uh, so there were many you know, musicians who were reaching out to me. They were already fleeing from the country. As you know, there were huge queues at the borders. Um, and they reached out to me because they didn't know what to do. And I helped them simply just connecting them with organizations that could probably help them when they couldn't do that because of language. Um, yeah. Uh, is that platform uh, designed in any way that people from Germany, like the people who are watching us now, uh, could uh, look that up and and yeah, it's open. Help. It's uh, it's absolutely open. I think it's a basic basic platform, uh, and it's very easy to find. And people can post information. Organization can post their offers. For example, if they are searching for musicians, or if they have available uh, stipend or available play, um, uh, you know, like a study for for Ukrainian refugees or some programs uh for musicians and artists because uh, this platform is not only for musicians but also for artists for dancers we are all in this together in the art so this platform was uh embracing the whole art as it is well kami had the idea maybe you kami you you say that yourself yeah yeah maybe maybe you could send us the the the, yes. the, the platform link that would be yeah. great yeah uh yes I was going to ask that too, but I thought you wanted to say, say something else, Camille, because Camille this week came up with the idea mm -hmm. um, to uh, reach out to Ukrainian refugees who are in the region where we live, mm -hmm. to take them along to concerts uh, so that uh, when they don't have to pay for a ticket or so, uh, mm -hmm. take them along so they can uh just 
have a nice evening without thinking about the war and mm -hmm. having contacts. Well, in fact, so I started on. I started doing that a few years ago because I was asked here to to compose a, a, a piece with refugees, and they came from Eritrea mainly. But now, with uh, with the war in Ukraine, we have had a fantastic platform that was created. It uh, it is called Kultur hilft Kultur, culture helps culture. And through that, we, um, myself, my, my husband, found a, a family who was looking for a piano for their daughter because they, they, they lived in a, in a home. And now we had the whole family, in, each in one room, you know. And then I started to take them to, to concerts when I could. And I think it is nice. It is really something we can do. But the, yeah, there, there was, uh, yeah help organized here and we should absolutely go on doing that because i i just see that uh, some of the the i know an ukrainian woman she's 46 she's changed between the the start of the war when she arrived and now seven times the lodging so being in the philharmonie which is wonderful here in cologne is for her like a uh, present huh? i take her sometimes to very modern music and she says it's interesting, <laughs> yeah. you know, it doesn't have to be Mozart, but the, the way, you know, sharing a, a concert is very nice. Yeah. It's amazing what you did. I just want to add something that is a very important point. So I, uh, through this platform, as people were posting, you know, we were having kind of like mild moderation because it, okay, it's safe with germany it's safe with europe but there are many other countries or like relatively safe right but there are many other countries that where different kind of uh, propositions come from for example they can post we want musicians only female musicians in dubai this and this age and i think it's important uh, because there are so many women and children that are majority uh, in their majority that are fleeing the country because as you know men are not allowed outside the country uh, and there are many people who are taking advantage of this situation and it's uh, both human trafficking human slavery etc and this danger is also for the musicians and artists and dancers as well so um, when such posts come i don't delete them but i always specify on them that think every single offer that you get think about it why do they want only female uh, violinists or dancers why exactly this age so that people in vulnerable situation who are more prone to saying yes to different kind of projects around the world think before they say yes to things okay good point uh, back to you, uh, to yourself. Uh, may I ask what made you go to Norway, uh, especially? It was studied. Okay. Yes, I was very lucky to, to have my professors, uh, Signor Hagen. Uh, he is a Norwegian composer of orchestral music, and he is playing in the orchestra himself, um, clarinet, and. Uh, so I had lessons with him along the studies at the conservatory here, and also a course in composition in Oslo, but it was digitally based because of the COVID. So, yeah. So two catastrophes, one after the other, so to speak. Yes. Um, would you think that your music mm -hmm. changed because of those catastrophes? Do you have the impression that your music is different now than from before 20, 24th February? Or... Yes, and not only that, but also my perception of the music that I composed before the war. For example, I have a piano composition, The Road, and I cannot play it because every time I touch the keys and start to play it, I feel irritated like there is something wrong with it because every single composition that we create it's a reflection of our perception of events the world environment 
Right. And when that perception changes dramatically, we no longer experience our own compositions in the same way, and they no longer represent us in present time. Mm -hmm. And perhaps it's also painful to come back mm -hmm. to who we were, because it, the music is like a bridge to our mm -hmm. past selves. Roman, how would you uh, see that from your uh, conducting point of view? If you listen to the music of Natalia, would you agree? Is there differences also in perception? Do you have the same problem? Um, I don't know. I, I, I didn't listen music after 24 February, you know? <laughs> like you, uh, you, you never have a time for this, um, because you, uh, you know, every day you don't know what will happen. And so, it's good luck for me that I have a light today. You know, um, because Russian uh, now Russians attack uh, our uh, energy system. It's problem. You know, uh, where, you are, where, where are you exactly right now? Uh, I'm now uh, in Lviv. It's a big city, uh, Western West. Ukraine. Oh, mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. And uh, we don't have uh, here, here in this city, we don't have uh, much more, uh, many problems uh, uh, of this, but uh, Eastern cities and central cities now, they have many of these problems, you know. Uh, but there's because... some, some bombing in Viv also. Once more, sorry. You, you had some bombings earlier. Yeah, but of course, of course. You know, uh, we didn't have uh, uh, any alarm. Uh, maybe one day it was for me. Oh, how it how it can can be in this situation? Because all the day, day after day, we have alarm. You know, Natalia know this because uh, because uh, she was here and. Uh, uh, in the composer competition, yeah, mm -hmm. it's always, and uh, I don't know what I must say in your uh, answer in your question, <laughs> because you know Ukrainians who live here, and they just thinking about not not music, they just thinking about the moments that we have now, saving saving your life. Yep, it's like this. And then didn't know. Uh, I don't know. Um, maybe uh, in a minute will be an alarm, and I must go in my shelter, but down in my building. You no, know, it's like this. You you don't thinking about music. You don't thinking about nothing. But we still work always. It's like this. Uh, still working. You, yeah, what you're working is at the moment. Yep. Really, um, now I work with five orchestras in Lviv, you know. Uh, I have um, a military orchestra, two military orchestras, and uh, and one professional. It's in Lviv. Uh, it's a young but professional orchestra from Lviv Philharmonic. And we, yep, we're still playing, we're still working. Day after day, we have concerts, but... That's very what? courageous. That's very courageous. Bravo. Um, yep. What, what yep. music do you conduct when you do the concerts? Um, sorry, I don't hear good. Uh, no. What pieces do you conduct at the moment when you do have concerts? Uh, you know, uh, maybe last week I have I had a concert in Kiev. In Kiev with Lumos Orchestra, it's an uh, orchestra. Uh, we play uh, film music or something, some something like this. You know, we must uh, prepare our concert uh, at four o'clock. You know, and maybe uh, uh, we have two rehearsals and one rehearsals without light. <laughs> you know, like this. Uh, we take some uh, some lightings and. and do what we can do and we go and we we, we we go to Kyo and do what we can because it's our reality it's like this yeah. but we didn't but we didn't 
stop uh, in anyway and we will not stop in this because uh, it's music you know it's light for the people yeah but that unluckily excludes simply from the circumstances that you would conduct a piece of contemporary music like of natalia's and yeah a little time yep of course this music is uh, this music needs more much more time you know um can you tell us about uh, the when you conducted natalia's piece the the maybe tell us about the um the, the competition where Natalia won a, a prize because I was in contact with uh, Ferdinando Nazzaro. In fact, he wants to join. He probably uh, will join later. So uh, Ferdinando Nazzaro for um, for us people is um, the co the composer, um, uh, the professor of composition at Santa Cecilia in Rome, and he. Now explain to me what kind of what exactly does he do uh, in Lviv? Uh, you know, it's a first competition. Uh, you know, I, I conducted more than I don't remember how many competitions for composer I I conduct. Uh, but uh, it was first competition when the uh, composer from Ukraine win one you know it was great for me and it's truly for me uh i conducted more than maybe two hundreds two hundred spring years of uh, music uh, like this and it was for me uh, like opening wow we have uh, so young but so cool composer uh and it was big opening for me. Uh, we play, we played with uh, with great orchestra because we work. It's uh, uh, Lebec Sinfonietta. It's professional orchestra with very good players. And uh, all these this players said, "Wow, we have so young but so powerful composer." <laughs> and it was in Italia. Yeah. <laughs> like this if i would ask you how to describe natalia's music uh what would you say how would you describe it um i you know we can talk about this uh, maybe hours more than so, 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 so much time, but uh, I think uh, I would say, okay, uh, you know, it's like uh, fresh air in the romantic music. For me, it's like it's it's yeah, it's all it's fresh air in the romantic music. It's for me like this. Oh, yeah. Maybe no. may, maybe Natalia. Um, maybe we can hear something now. <laughs> Natalia, yes. what do you, what do you, what do you say about this? <laughs> I have never heard Roman talk about my composition before, so I didn't know it was uh, that great. <laughs> 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 Thank you. <laughs> um, but you agree with the fresh air? Um, uh, it depends on what context, but I think with the fresh air that I impose some melody in the composition instead of um, thinking of new ways to, to use an instrument. Um, yes, I, I think that's, that's my strength and also my weakness because I, uh, when, when it comes to contemporary music, it's uh, always very demanding to create something new that has never been played before or um, there was also another composer that was participating in this event he was so good at it it's coming new um, techniques for the string instruments and he can play every single instrument of that it were very interesting techniques but i personally prefer like melodic structures and uh, the, the colors in it's i think every single composer has his own strengths and we should use it uh, about that but what i want to say add to something that roman said about the 
if they think about music, I don't think they do. They don't have time to think about music. They are music. Like in that moment when he was conducting the piece, when their musicians were performing, they were like, when I was sitting in the hall, in the concert hall that was full of humanitarian help packages and there was no audience, as Roman stated, we had to have like very strange hours for a re uh, rehearsal, for concert, because it was due to the statistics of the sirens, of the bombings, or when it was the least probable for it to happen, then we had those arrangements. And I was sitting there and I was like, um, I was hearing this piece in that hall for the first time in the concert hall, because usually we had it in rehearsal hall. And, you know, with the acoustics, uh, you can hear some, I don't know, some uh, echoes from different parts of the room. And when you compose something and you add a new technique or something that ex is experimental, you don't know what to expect auditory. You are sitting there and you in that situation, you don't think, oh, that's interesting. Oh, that sound is interesting. You think, was that a siren? Was it a bomb? Was it, is something coming? <laughs> you know, you're sitting in that beautiful concert hall and you don't know what to expect. And that's where your focus is. So I don't know how they performed it on such a level. Um, you know, the, the, the inner strength and the balance that they have to keep all the time while performing a new piece that has never been played before it's it's immense i that, that would not sound good without those musicians and conductor uh, before we play or you play uh, some music of yours uh, for all of us would you like to explain what are you going to play and uh, where was it performed and etc. Just tell us something, please, about the piece. Um, the piece is called Dies Jovis. Uh, from Latin is uh, the day of Jupiter or Thursday, because in Latin language they had a planet for each day of the week. And so the day of Jupiter, um, it's called, and I called it the day of Jupiter Thursday in 2018, because I started composing the melody, the main theme on a Thursday, and I didn't know what to call it. So I gave it a name, uh, the day of Jupiter, Dies Jovis. And it was kind of destined because the war started on 24th of February, which was a Thursday. And also this piece was performed on a Thursday, the panel. Um, and uh, in Ukraine and in Norway, it was performed on Thursday. So I don't know, it's just a coincidence. But this piece is about, it started about the darkness that is being in darkness that you are leaning towards the light. And that's why it starts with the cello in the main theme, with the solo cello melody and it goes on to a shell structure where it culminates in the whole string orchestra and then it ends up in the higher register in the first violin with the same uh, undertones of the melody that's the piece that received the the prize yes uh, can you tell us what the prize was and uh... Uh, the it was the first prize uh, for the competition called Colony New Music International Competition that is uh, organized by Ferdinando and the um, Italian the people and stuff. Right. It's in Lviv, yeah, it's been there for the past 10 years and I've always wanted, I've always, I, I, I was thinking where should I um, participate because I I'm not a competition person, <laughs> but it was an opportunity for me to both play this piece on a land which this piece is dedicated to, uh, and also an opportunity to play with the, one of the best orchestras in Ukraine. And yeah, I, I wasn't going for a prize. I was going for the opportunity to, to, yeah. to hear my music alive by real instruments. 
And with the real conductor, and that's Roman. If I <laughs> yes, right? a real conductor as well. <laughs> <laughs> so I, meanwhile, I made you co-host, so you can share your uh, screen. Please don't forget to to write to to click into sharing with audio, so you can play uh, the piece or share with video even, so you can share it with us. Okay, advanced. Oh, uh, yes. Let me try this. Oh, wait. Just a moment. Okay. I suggest that you give a question to Roman before I put it on the screen. Is that okay? Sorry? Uh, could you please uh, uh, ask, a Roma, uh, ask Roman a question so that I... Ask uh, Roman uh, what question? I, uh, I'm afraid... I no, don't... because it, I, I'm not sure how to do this yet. Um, may I may I ask um, the members of this uh, meeting to mute the microphones please without you <laughs> the other members yes thank you thank you so there's a button that says uh, share screen Yes, and, yes, and yes. And then yes. it asks you with audio or video or something. Uh, yeah, share the sound. And video. Optimize for, uh, do, should, I click, uh, should I click the optimize for video clip? Yes. Yes, okay. And then you share. Yes, you okay. Then Great. you should be able to do it. Yes, thank you for your help.
Bravo, bravo both of you. Um, Natalia, would you allow me a non-musical question? It has, of course, to do with the blue painting uh, that was standing on stage and uh, is hanging behind you. Does it have yes. a special meaning to this piece particular? Yes, because my, my, my teacher in composition, he was a bit abstract. So he, uh, he told me to go to a museum in 2018 and they had a, an exhibition of a Norwegian artist his name was Stig Nuth, um, Jakub Weidemann. He was a postmodernist um, artist, he's dead now, but he had, there was a huge exhibition and he said, choose three paintings. And I went through the hall and then I saw this painting, which is, uh, uh, yeah, the one that you saw. And it was covering the whole wall and it was like this immense blue color of freedom. This is what was uh, strolling from it, the energy of freedom. And I chose it and this is where I started to compose this piece to the painting of Jakob Weidemann. And actually I decided to um, take a signature uh, after the concert from each, comp I don't know if you see it or not, yeah. Oh yeah, a little bit. So there are signatures of each compo uh, uh, orchestra musician uh, that uh, that played my piece in Viv. Okay. So it's covered with the signatures from them. And I'm so, I, I came to Norway and I just uh, framed it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very nice idea. Yes, because they are, uh, they are now all the, you know, when we talk about compositions, uh, we, we think about composition and, but composition is a dead uh, body without a soul before it's performed by live musicians. This is how I feel it. Yeah, that's a very good way to put it. I, I usually call it or think of it as uh, like uh, with an old camera, you take a picture and you don't get the film developed. It's just a piece of hope in the yes. camera. It's a piece of hope. That was very beautiful stated. Can I ask you a musical question to your piece, Natalia? Yes. At the end, you, you, as you said, this violin is very high and very nice that the, then the, this, this sound is taken by the other violins. And then you hear this tuk, tuk. First you see, well, I, I couldn't hear it. Maybe if I was in the hall, it would be different. But anyway, we see a Ro Roman conducting and we hear the basses. So what was your idea there? It's a heartbeat. It's just a rhythm of a heartbeat, and that's where it uh, um, it ends on uh, crescendo and goes to fortissimo as much as they could. And they were so, you know, um, orchestral musicians in Ukraine, uh, classical. They are so uh, careful with uh, with their instruments. And uh, Roman was very good at trying in the rehearsals to warm them up for more more fortissimo on that bass uh to to get it through so this is what the point was to end it on a hard bit of a hope thank you and another question so this is piece for string uh what do you usually um are, do you have favored instruments or do you write for voices as well yes we have um uh, i have a uh, favorite instruments cello <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes it's cello. We have, uh, can I share a story with you? We have a refugee because art uh, in Europe is on a very high level, but it's still not enough focus on art and music. And especially here in Norway, when it comes to the government budget that goes to music school, it's very problematic uh, because they don't take art uh, that seriously. Um, uh, so uh, we have a refugee child from Ukraine. She came from um, Chernihiv. It's one of those regions that were one of the first to be invaded, just 40 kilometers from Belarusian, Belarusian uh, border. And uh, she came here in Mars and she, she lost her cello in the, in the bombings under the missiles in Chernihiv. 
She came here without the instrument. She's 16 years old teenager. She played for eight years. She won prizes in Ukraine for in you know for the cello competitions. And she came here in March. She didn't get any help. And then we uh, found her through this platform. Uh, her mother made a post that she didn't get any hours with the cello, she doesn't have instrument. And can you imagine yourself being a teenager who put her life into this instrument, this music, you love it. And then you are on, not only uh, get cut from your environment, from your home, from your country, your language, but also from the love of your life, which is your music, your instrument. I was shocked. And so I started uh, not uh, getting into war but i started <laughs> to kind of and yesterday she got her cello she got her first uh lesson with the cello teacher and you know when i was sitting there and i was uh, helping her with the language uh, because i don't know how to play cello you know so they had to translate her um during the lesson uh because you know the, the child he hasn't seen the cello in eight months and I'm sitting like that uh, it was like a highlight of my life to see my favorite instrument a new generation of hope playing once uh, for the first time in eight months I feel I feel like that's the meaning <laughs> of the life that's wonderful yes uh, oh. may I say something yes as please. guest um, uh, I think your piece is very amazing especially the, the higher violins uh, departed from the other orchestra. The, the basses at the end, of course, they remind to some noises, something like bombing, things like that. I find it very amazing and I uh, would suggest your piece should replace the former piece of Samuel Barber that is played all around the world. It should be yours now and one should tell it to every conductor of this world. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, I, you know, in, in the middle, it was a bit experimental with the seagull effect because uh, I just said you should take the freedom to the violinist and perhaps not it's not the perfect thing to say as a composer but i like the experience so perhaps something didn't work out but at the same time i feel like it's a contrast thing. Mm. so you get some bad stuff that highlights the good stuff in the end but thank you so much for your comment well how many com conductors do you know how many conductors i know i know two of them yeah. No, I, I mean Burkhardt. Uh. <laughs> oh, um, not so many. Uh, new music at Wiesbaden is a very hard thing. Uh, it is not, not good connections at all. So I address it to, to everybody listening here because uh, it is very difficult to, to get uh, performances by uh, via orchestra. And it's a, it's a big, big theme that it will connect us. And of course, I hope you will be successful, but it's, it's not very easy to, to, to bring on connections now in this point, if you don't have an own standing really in, in, this, in this area, it's, um, it's not a very comfortable situation. One would like to help, but there are no means at this respect, um, uh, at this special respect. Um, I'm so sorry about that, really. <laughs> well, well I, I was guest conductor several times with the uh, Hamburg-based uh, string orchestra, and I hope I'll work with them again. But uh, Ludger, maybe we can convince Tobias to do something. Yes, why not? I. I think he is a good boy, yes. <laughs> and his uh, orchestra orchestra is great. Yeah. We can we can uh, Burkhard, may we quote what you said? Yes, of course. Of course. <laughs> we we cannot promise anything, but we'll try. We can only promise that we'll try. We we, sh we shall try. We have meeting of composer association in, in Munich in November. Mm -hmm. I hope we see us and, and Lütke Vollmer as well. 
And, and I'm very sad about uh, many cultural activities that do not care about U Ukraine. There is a lot of support for U Ukraine artists. That's very good. But for our respect of new music, I'm still waiting for ideas and for connections and for putting things together. So, so we will talk about this in, in, in the end of November at Munich. That's exactly the reason why we're doing this tonight. Mm. I won't be there in Munich because I have a seminar with my students at the same time, which I can, couldn't uh, postpone or can, even cancel. But uh, to go, uh, let's go one step back, though, uh, Roman. When you talked about Natalia's music as fresh air, does that have anything to do with that blue painting? Because that looks like fresh air, too. Can you, can you repeat? Because I was a bit out of internet. I, I was asking Roman uh, when he described your music as fresh air, whether that had to do also with the blue painting. You know, uh, when you... like fresh air. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> you know, uh, when you open the score, right to do, yep. Uh, first, uh, what to do, uh, conductors, uh, it's uh, looking just like a picture. They didn't listen. Yeah, they didn't uh, something else. Just look, because uh, if good, if you uh, look at the good music, just look. You can many uh, understand about about this music uh, because it's like. Uh, about about what I, yeah about fresh air um, why I said this uh, because uh, um, in the climax of this piece yep yeah, uh, I always said uh, for musician one uh, thing that uh, they always must play with uh, big balls yeah very big balls. And uh, for, for, for that moment, uh, uh, we said in Ukrainian, it's like, how would say, uh, when you use big balls, you have uh, uh, air sound with the strings. I'm a string player, you know, I'm a mm -hmm. violinist. Uh, Natalia too, no? I'm a Natalia. <laughs> ah, okay. Far away from that. Okay, it's, it's like that. And I use always this uh, method, you know, with, with that box. And for this music, I think it was a good way. Uh, that's why I said about this fresh air, about mm -hmm. air in the strings. Yeah. And uh, it, this music is like uh, with this box, with this method uh, that I use, uh, that I try to use for all the piece uh, I think it was a good way it's like like this yeah. that that that's why I said that this is fresh air Natalia could you send me the score with a like a pdf yeah 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 I can do that please do uh, I uh, would like to suggest listening to a little bit more music of yours and of course, you made me very curious with your remark about feeling irritated and strange playing a piece for piano that you had written before the war. Uh, would you have a recording of that? Yeah, I, I have. OK, I have a recording. Um, I have a, both a recording that is uh, played by a concert pianist here in Christian Sand. Uh, and the reason why, because I uh, I uh, I heard my my arm, mm -hmm. and she played it for me on the concert, uh, which was amazing and another perspective. And I have a recording, but I an audio recording. And again, it was to the painting, to the abstract painting of another artist, the road. I have it, uh, but do you want it now? Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Um, nice to share with everybody. Yes, I have. Um, so, I 
I have it with the concert pianist on my computer right now. I have to to find the one where I'm playing. Do you want with the or with the concert pianist? Um, you decide what you want to share with us. Yeah, because this is the only thing that I have available right away. Okay. Yes. Um, okay, let me see. Okay. Um Demise. Can you see it now? Yes. Now yes. Now, yes? Yeah. Okay. So. Thank you. So, um, what exactly made you uneasy about the piece? Mm. If I may ask that. It's so peaceful. <laughs> Too positive. Yeah. I yeah. think it, it 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 ends in the like kind of a theme of the stars and falling mm. asleep, and this is something that all Ukrainians have lost. And this past years, we even if I fall asleep, um, I talk to about this with other Ukrainians. We just uh, wake up during the night, uh, and we check uh, because we have like a Telegram channel where we check. If everything is all right, there are like instant news about all the events in Ukraine. 
and so we we I wake up at 3 4 a.m. every single night it's like my brain is adjusted to checking up so that it doesn't miss if something happens because I would feel guilty to sleep peacefully if something happened to my family in Ukraine or my friends so this is something that is irritating that I that yeah, that I don't get to sleep easily anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yes, but music can all also uh, give consolation or or hope. Yeah, it is. Um... If you think of it that way, you can you can make peace with your own music. Well, you can make peace with your own music and there, there are um, uh, things that are out of your control and they are very global and you can feel in dissonance with your environment if you are... Because I was in April in Ukraine and I remember I was feeling more in peace there because I knew that if something would happen, it would happen with me too. But if you are not there, if you are in peaceful environment with people surrounding you and musicians and they are totally, uh, you feel total in dissonance. It's like you, uh, you are, you are, you are, it's like you are carrying uh, a composition inside of you that is in dissonance with your environment. This is how it feels. Mm -hmm. Natalia, um, that sounds, I can relate very well to what you say. Um, that sounds like you could write a, a piece with this feeling. <laughs> yes, I've been, I've been composing lately, but they are all so tragic that I don't want to, uh, to, to give uh, it to the world. <laughs> Maybe yeah. you should after all. Yeah, but I feel the responsibility, like composers, they they have the responsibility what they show to the world. I feel like there is a responsibility for that. Like I can't just compose anything and just present it to the world. Roman, how do you feel uh, in that respect? Uh, what Natalia just said about feeling guilty, not being there if something happens and you being there, maybe for you it's the opposite. Would you li like to be somewhere else? You know, uh, in this summer I was in Norway. Mm. Uh, thank you to Natalia, thank you about this. <laughs> I was in no, Norway no, in, in one, in one uh, conductors competition this was princess astrid competition for conductors and um, my feeling was like like feeling of natalia i was in norway just for one week but uh, you know uh, when i uh, crossed the, the border um, uh, no, we have uh, the border with poland yep across this border and uh, back to back to ukraine i said oh thank you it's good you know it's like this and because uh, it's like it's like this uh, what said natalia it's uh, about guilty like about this um it's uh, it's it's one one side and another side uh our soldiers uh always said one uh good thing you know it's very good thing uh, they said uh, we are fighting for uh, that you are uh, was uh, you are doing uh, something something in your in your cities you know it's like uh, uh we are fighting for for uh for a peace and you must uh, you must take this piece and uh, uh, be happy in this time because we are fighting for this. Mm -hmm. And and I always said, uh, no matter where are you, 
but you must remember this that uh, the soldier fighting for this piece and you must uh, take this time for uh, good things it's like this yes, it's my you. opinion I'm full of, <laughs> full of respect for you Lutka it looked like you were going to ask something Hi, <laughs> I'm listening. I'm full of uh, respect and, and also full of empathy. Cannot um, understand how you can live and make music there in this country full of bombs. I'm uh, my biography is if I were young. I lived in Eastern Berlin and I studied in Leipzig when the war break. I, I worked also, I fight it also against this uh, Soviet system and we had freedom. <laughs> and now I see all that. Going back. It, it, it is very hard, yes. Yeah. And Natalia, thank you for your great piece. It's hopeful, and I say it is hopeful because it tell us it tell us about your life, uh, about your inner life. It is a story, a great story, a very individual. It is your own, and that is what art have to be that is what art have to be yes and then uh, so i say it is hopeful it's very hopeful that's all i can say i'm full of yes empathy and i think um uh, robert your idea uh, to uh, speak with tobias rempe it's a good idea yes and also the idea to speak in our uh, conference now in November about speaking more with Ukrainian composers. Yes, that is a good idea. We have to help us. We have to help us. Also you, Roman, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have to help artists which yeah. which are make their wonderful work in in a country full of such difficulties and give the people their hope yes work without light yes and and this horror of bombs i yes thank you that's all. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think I think we have to um, change the contacts, and then uh, let's um, think and speak about ideas. Yes. Very good idea. Uh, yeah. uh, Natalia, would you consent that we uh, share your email address with everybody? Yes, of course. Uh, there is no problem about that. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, I want also to say that on the way to this competition, I was driving a car for volunteering at the border uh, and I, I was driving through Berlin and I uh, slept over at a German family uh, in Berlin uh, at her, their place and they were very welcoming. It was in April when everything was very chaotic and also one of my friends, uh, Anna, she also comes from Berlin and she uh, was the only one um, from my international uh, friends who suggested right away. She said, Natalia, my family has a house in Berlin and uh, I've just talked to them. Your family is welcome there anytime. Like just bring your family to safety. And this is something that I think is, you know, it's, it does help, you know, when when you just give help to every single human being and musician 
and doesn't matter if it's a child musician helping with the instrument or bringing to the concert to kind of therapy every single thing that you do is helping on a level that you cannot even imagine so i'm very appreciative thank you so much and i also think that we can share our emails at least uh, uh, robert and myself so that uh, if we can help with uh, not only musically but also our house you know um we and, and so that we also can keep in touch that would be very very good roman and and natalia thank you yeah franz michael daimling wants to say something uh, my, my english is not so very good but i will try it uh, there's something uh, remarkable there's a common ground uh, between music and uh, between um, music and uh, and uh, peace the two words peace and peace sounds the same that's right and I want to have, thank all of you that uh, you are supporting our our West Italia. Yep. Thank you. At least we can do. Roman. Yep. Yep. We're trying our best. <laughs> we keep keep on trying. Thanks. Thank you, Roman. Thank you. So Does anyone else have uh, questions? Like Alexandra or Borka. No questions. Well, uh, there is no question, but um, I do have the feeling now conditions have changed so much. And now your, your music uh, getting a sort of romantic background. And um, so I do have the impression um, at present it's important it's yours and you express something and you have using means that are okay these pieces are okay and the rules on new music and what is afforded this is just not important at present it's not the theme so so this expression and the authentic and 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 the special background that Mm, that, that brings another idea of, of what is important and what it is not important and not to try to be abstract at any price you know and um, so it's I think it's a lot um, work for us of, of thinking new about things and and accept things just as they come and and being em emphatic and and try trying to do the best with it and and help um, I'm trying to learn Ukrainian. I find it very hard. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, now I'm losing even my my one sentence I have learned. Yashchipuhano Rosmobula Yupo Ukrainsky. It it's so hard work. <laughs> uh, uh, but but something near near the tears, like like Lutka, yeah. It's it's very, very difficult to to get on it. Uh, playing a melody maybe is uh, now easier than than talking about it really that's our that's our thing as musicians i think but look i thought you mentioned a very important um issue and that is uh in this, those circumstances there is also a positive uh, little seed in there and mm -hmm. that is that it reminds us of things that are existential, existentially important, mm -hmm. and it minimizes discussions about uh, lesser important things. So I think uh, it's important that this piece is good music. And that's what what the our composers union that we're all in here uh, is about. This is a solidary uh, structure. It's it's not the question uh, what kind of music do you compose and uh, is it is it more a little bit less modern or is it abstract or, or less abstract? Uh, it, the only issue is is it good music? Mm -hmm. And if it's good music, it's worth being played, and then we'll fight for it. 
Yes, that's, definitely. That's what it's all about. If there's no more questions, uh, my last question is uh, only repeating from before. I'd be thankful for a PDF score of the uh, DSUOVs. And uh, I, yesterday I was in, in the Yobis temple, by the way. I'm here in Pos Positano uh, in Italy, and I visited uh, Pompeii yesterday, which is just a couple of kilometers away. <laughs> <laughs> that was very interesting observation. A special yeah. link to your piece. <laughs> so I'd be thankful for uh, the score. And we will, uh, if anybody wants to get into contact with Natalia or Roman, uh, I would uh, extend that to Roman too. Please send your your. Or do we have your email address? I think we do. Um, so if any one of the others uh, attending this meeting uh, want to get into contact with Natalia or Roman, please contact Kami or me or uh, yeah, and we'll we'll share uh, the address. Also, well, can I share the link to the platform if anyone wants to post? Yes, something? I was going to ask also that. Yes, I've just done that in the chat here, and also I can send you the link. Just in case. And, and I would I would say if you if you want to send this piano piece or if you have another piano piece, you just send it yeah to Burkhard Moore. I'm not a very good pianist, but my wife, <laughs> so maybe we we can put it in a program because uh, there's a lot of fire now to to bring on things and to use it and to to ask for theaters or for places to, to bring it and, that, and not just wait for what will happen, but to, to be very offensive and say, so this is a piece of young people. And now uh, please invite us to play and to do it. And so it is a win-win situation. Yeah, We want to help, but we have to open doors that have been closed so far for new music. There has been a lot of activity towards COVID pandemic there is a lot of activity for U Ukrainians, but uh, of, uh, very often there is no idea to put into it the new music. So there is orchestra, traditional orchestra, or there's dancing, or there's literature, but there is no uh, biotope, we say. <laughs> there is no little place for new music to bring in their ideas as well, and the, and the authors as well. And I think uh, th this evening brought a new inspiration to to be very offensive and and uh, demand on this this point of of um, artificial uh, existence yeah to, to bring it into the action so send piano music and if we are able to do it we, we try hard and if we are not able you won't hear anything from us <laughs> thanks okay I think this is the point then. Camille looks like she wants to say something. Uh, I just wanted to say that uh, that uh, Ferdinando is trying to get in, but somehow it doesn't work. But uh, he will be able to follow this afterwards because we will se send the link of the, the recording. OK. Yeah. So thank you all for attending. Thank you in particular, Natalia and Roman, for being there. A special uh, special wishes for Roman that uh, you will be able to work undisturbed until the end of the war and all as many people as possible with you. Yes, we yeah. keep you in our minds. Thank you. Thank you. So thank, thank you, you so everybody. Much. Thank you.